Hi, this is Scott with Learn to Stop Hunger, and today we're going to take a look at how to create a keyframe animation using CSS3. I've got Visual Studio Express 2012 for web open, and I'm going to start a new project. I'm going to do an ASP.NET empty web application, and I will go ahead and call it keyframes. I'm going to click OK to create the new project. The first thing that I'm going to do after the project is created is to add a new HTML page. I'm going to call that index.html. After that, the next thing that I'm going to do is to go ahead and add a CSS style sheet. and I will call that index.css. After that, I want to go ahead and add a new folder for my script files. So, new folder, I'm going to call it scripts. I'm going to right click on my project and do manage NuGet packages. And I'm looking for jQuery here. As you notice, I've got online expanded. I have all selected. And jQuery comes up by default. If you've selected these options and you don't see jQuery, go up to the search box, type in jQuery, and hit the magnifying glass. For now, I'm going to go ahead and click Install. You can see it's going ahead and installing the jQuery package. I'm going to click Close. If I open up my scripts folder, I can see that I now have a number of jQuery related files in there. And I also want to add my own custom JavaScript file, which I'm going to call index.js. The next thing that I want to do is to add references to my various files. So going back to my index.html here, I'm going to add a reference to my style sheet. I will add a reference to jQuery, which, and the reference to jQuery must go before my reference to index.js because I am going to be using jQuery within index.js. So my final reference here is to index.js. You'll notice I picked the jQuery-2.1.1.js file, um, and that is the the regular expanded jQuery file. If I go over here to index.js, I'm going to drag jQuery over a reference to that, which is going to help me with my autocomplete within Visual Studio. Now, after doing that, I am going to go ahead and add a title to my page, and the title will be Keyframe Example. I want to add some other markup. I want to add a div that is going to hold my animation. I'm going to give it an ID of Dan animation container. And inside that div, I'm going to place an image. And this has just made me realize I missed another step here. I'm going to go back to my project, right click, and add another folder. My new folder is going to be called Images. And I am going to add an existing file here. Existing item. I'm just going to do some navigation here until I find the file that I'm looking for. And it's a little graphic of Mario in a raccoon costume, you can see there. And for our animation, we're actually just going to have Mario uh, walk across the screen. Alright, so with my image tag, I'm going to go ahead and specify a source. And I can click on Pick URL. Actually, I may be able to do one better even. Let's try this. I just drag the image file onto the page here. One thing I notice it's missing is alt. So the alternate text, I'm going to put Mario for that. 
Oh yes, the other thing, I want I do want to go ahead and add an ID to this image because I'm gonna be manipulating it. The ID is Mario. Now after my div, I am going to add a button. The button's gonna have an ID of start. And I'll use that to reference it in my JavaScript, and the text of the button is going to be start animation. That's all for the HTML file. Let's go ahead and move on over to our CSS. You can see by default here we got a rule for body. There's not really anything I want to do there for now. I do want to define a rule for the animation container div. I put a pound in front of the ID here. That's how you select an ID within CSS. So pound animation container. I'm going to set a style for this animation container div. It's going to have a width of 300 pixels, a height of 300 pixels, a one pixel solid black border all the way around. And the other thing that I want to do is to hide anything that overflows beyond the bounds of the div. So that's our animation container div. The next thing I want to style is my start button. And I'm just going to put a top margin on that to separate it a little bit from the animation div. Next, I'm going to put a style on the Mario image. I'm going to give this thing a relative position, which means that we can provide coordinates to move the Mario image in relation to where it would normally appear in the flow of the HTML document. Initially what we're going to do is we're going to add 180 pixels to the top of this image, which basically means it's going to move down 180 pixels on the screen. That's all for that. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is I want to go ahead and set up some additional styles for the Mario graphic when it has the animated class applied to it and we're going to apply this class using JavaScript. We've got three properties here that are related to animation and keyframes and I need to repeat these twice. I'm targeting Google Chrome and the version of Chrome that I'm using requires a prefix on the properties which is this dash webkit dash so my properties are animation name. I'm going to be I'm associating this with an animation that we've yet to define. My animation name is going to be running dash Mario. I've got dash webkit dash animation duration, which tells us how long the animation will run. In this circumstance, it's four seconds. And then I've got webkit-animation, if I could type, timing function. And I want that to be linear. And what that means is that the animation will be just basically a smooth running animation throughout the entire four seconds. I'm going to go ahead and repeat these properties without the dash webkit dash prefix. Uh, in order to possibly add support for other browsers. If you want to have complete support of browsers, I would recommend that you go ahead and add prefixes for other browsers as well, such as dash ms dash for IE, and I think there's some other ones out there, maybe dash o dash for Opera, I want to say, and probably a few others out there as well. 
I'm not really going for a complete example here in terms of that, but I just wanted to get you started at least. And this one will run on the version of Chrome that I have. And actually actually it should work on those older this older version of Chrome which I have and even newer versions as well. And perhaps some other browsers that support just the straight up animation dash syntax. All right, that's all for that. And fix the tabbing on that. Now, I am going to go ahead and define my animation, my running dash Mario animation. I'm going to do this twice again, making use of the WebKit prefixes. Usually it would be at keyframes, but it's going to be at dash webkit dash keyframes. And then the name of our animation, which is running dash Mario. And I'm going to set the state of the animation at 0, 25, 50, 75, and 100%. So here's the state at 0% going to have, let's see, left, all I'm going to change is the left property for these by the way, left of zero pixels, so it's going to be the far left of the div, then at 25% we're going to have a left of 75 pixels, at 50%, we're going to have a left of 150 pixels. At 75%, we're going to have a left of 225 pixels. And at 100%, we're going to have a left of 300 pixels. Oops. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and copy this and get rid of that WebKit prefix for compatibility with other browsers. So all I need to do is get rid of that dash WebKit dash. And we are ready to go for the CSS. Now we're going to move on to JavaScript. I want to set up a document ready function which is going to execute some code once the document is completely loaded. I'm going to pass this method an anonymous function. First thing I'm setting up here is a click event handler for the start button. So when the user clicks clicks the start button, this bit of code is going to be executed. What's going to happen is we are going to disable the start button. That's the first thing that I'm going to do. So we're going to set the disabled property to true. The next thing that we're going to do is to add the animated class to our Mario image and this will set the keyframe animation in motion. Next, I'm going to go ahead and add a handler for the 
this is going to be on the, the Mario graphic. And when the animation ends, we're going to execute a function. Now, I'm going to repeat this handler here, one with a WebKit prefix and one without. And once again, this is for browser compatibility to allow for compatibility with browsers other than Chrome, perhaps. So basically what this is saying is when the Mario animation is complete, we're going to go ahead and execute the animation done function, which I have not yet defined. Now, I'm going to define the animation done function. I'm going to pass it an event. And what we're going to do here is we're going to enable the start button by setting the disabled property to false. And we are going to remove the animated class from the Mario image. All right, so that should take care of things. We're going to go ahead and give it a try here in Chrome. Oops. All right, so you can see we have our animation div here. We have the Mario image in its default location, and we've got the Start Animation button. When I click Start Animation, you can see that the image moves across the screen. And then when it's done, it resets to the left side again. You may have also noticed once I click that, the button is disabled. And then when the animation is complete, it's enabled once again. So there you have a simple example of CSS keyframe animations. Hopefully you will have found that useful and you can add some keyframe animations to your own website.